So, a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. We have discussed uh, transform dom domain compression of images, we have discussed uh, principal component analysis of images and we have uh, quickly looked at the JPEG standard, we have just looked at it, we have not simulated it. Now, I will quickly talk about, this will be a short uh, demonstration only lecture, sorry, we will talk about multi resolution coding coding of images or what is multi resolution and how do we work with it so for that let us we will work with our bg image this is the baboon image and this is a 512 by 512 image and uh, this is a bitmap. So, each pixel has its uh, is stored as a unique uh, 8 bit integer. Now, let me do something or uh, let us say I take this 512 by 512 image. So, take this 512 by 512 image. and. Let us take a block of 4 pixels. Let us take a block of 4 pixels and let us say that this block contains 4 pixels that are A, B, C and T. Let us say that this block contains 4 pixels A, B, C and T. Now, these 4 pixels A, B, C and D, so this block can be represented represented using 4 unique values a, b, c and d or I can represent this block using or we can perform deterministic operations on A, B, C, D and use those values instead. So, let us say I represent this A plus B plus C plus D divided by 4. Let me represent uh, this by A plus C plus D divided by 4. Let this be a plus B minus C minus T. So, let this be A minus B plus C minus T and this is some rough calculation. A minus B minus C plus T. Let these be the four values. So, I can if I can uniquely recover A, B, C, D from these values. I can uniquely recover A, B, C and D from these values. So, now for baboon let us do this. Let us construct this for uh, all blocks. So, we have B, G. So, let us say that I will call this multi res, save as fine. This here now for C1 goes to 1 is to 2 to this and C2, I am taking blocks of 4. So, naturally I will be going from the image. So, what I will be doing is, so let me just describe the operation. I will be taking blocks of 4 from within the image, storing these 4 values instead and 
I will be storing these values in different quadrants. So, let me first do this and then try to make sense of it. So, block equals b g c 1 to c 1 plus 1 c 2 to c 2 plus 1 and this. Now, block 2 equals block times block 1 comma 1 plus and b g 2 equals this. So, let us see what happens. And So, I get this image, this is slightly, this looks like a shade of the baboon, but uh, this is garbled. So, what I will do is, since, okay, so this and there is a problem because block 2, block 2 1 comma 1, block 2. this this and finally 2 2 will be So, if I run this, so these needs to these need to be removed and save and run. So, I get the baboon, but uh, we see an unsightly pattern over here. So, what I observed is that uh, the first block contains the average of all the pixels and others are differences. So, let us do something. Uh, different and let us sort these or let us put these into different parts of the image. So, let me do something slightly different and what I will do is b g 2 c 1 because c 1s are all odd numbers. Since c 1s are all odd numbers, so C1 plus 1 by 2 will be an even number. C2s are also all odd numbers. So, this. So, this will run and clear all. So, actually clear BG2. This has constructed a 256 by 256 image, which is just the average or uh, this is a 256 by 256 image, which is each pixel is the average of uh, 4 pixel blocks of the other image. I can actually also store it like copy and plus this
So, SZ1 is 512. So, this will naturally add 256 to it. This will create a 512 by 512 image. This has created a 512 by 512 image, and this is a problem. And so, what I'll do is block two, block two, block two, and block two. Done. And uh, this has created four copies of the image with the first one being the average. So, let me look at uh, this has created four copies of the image with this being the average, these being the diagonal differences, these being the vertical differences and uh, these being the horizontal differences. So, I needed to code it better to make it uh, anyway. So, this is there. So, naturally one thing that uh, you will notice over here is that, so I will show the image again. Now, this average part of the image has uh, the most information and the other three parts have smaller amounts of information or uh, are mostly black or uh, mostly flat in color. So, most of the information is contained only in one block. So, what I can do is I can use again I can use uh, sub band coding, but instead of uh, coding the DCT coefficients I can code these four blocks of the image using uh, different number of bits and or I can encode these four blocks of the image using. Uh, so, let me show the image actually that will be easier. So, I can use more number of bits per pixel to encode this fourth quadrant and I could use smaller number of bits per pixel to encode the other quadrants and I can still get the whole of the image back. So, in this case again I can uh, have uh, a form of compression of the image, but uh, the good thing is that uh, this can be stacked. So, let me say I repeat this operation. So, instead of 2, I now do 3. So, I repeat this operation with BG3. So, so I repeat this operation with BG2 and So, now I get a smaller thumbnail of the image that is 1 16th the size of the original image, but again I can encode this using the maximum number of bits and uh, encode other components using a larger number of bits and still get away with it or I can still get something worthwhile out of this or I can still encode this image. So, I can create a pyramid of the image or I can create a pyramid of multiple resolutions of the same image and uh, encode the most information carrying portion with the maximum number of bits and go on decreasing it. Obviously, this can be done up to while reducing the image size up till 1 pixel. So, actually what I will do is I am show the original image BG. this and when I run this figure 2 and figure 3. So, the same image, this is the original image, this is uh, the same image represented at a level 2 and this is the same image represented at level 3. We can get this original image back using uh, this second image as well as well as the third image. Just that 
different bits or different levels of the image are quantized using uh, different number of bits giving us an advantage. So, this is the key idea behind wavelets. So, the key idea behind wavelets or wavelet domain compression is that you can represent any signal as the sum of a coarse and a precise detail signal represent and the coarse estimate can be represented using a higher number of bits, the precision can be using a lower number of bits and you can add the precision the precision over the coarse estimate to get a better quality image. So, I said that uh, we will be explaining YouTube resolution and uh, WhatsApp thumbnails. So, the idea is obviously this is just a bare bones idea of uh, YouTube resolutions or uh, WhatsApp thumbnails that if you look at uh, someone's WhatsApp, you choose to look at someone's WhatsApp display picture and you tap on that you get a very coarse estimate, a uh, very blurred picture. But uh, when you tap on it, you will get a better resolution image of the same image or uh, you will see that suddenly when you are able to download it, you get a clearer picture or uh, you get a more detailed picture of the same thing. So, the idea there or what happens is that uh, WhatsApp initially stores the a very coarse estimate or just say you would want to once I have this image, I would just want to store. So, I can just store this figure 3 or an even an image with an even lower resolution and uh, once I tap on it once that information is demanded, I can ask for these sub images and uh, I can say I can ask for this sub image and get this and then once I have this I can ask for these sub images one by one and uh, keep on increasing the resolution of the image. That is how most of these multi resolution things work. So, this also the coefficients used by me here for uh, doing this. So, the coefficients 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1 and so these coefficients actually represent the R wavelet or this represents the level 2 R wavelet in one dimension or arrange this way arranged this way, these represents the two dimensional Obviously, MATLAB has uh, multiple wavelets inbuilt and uh, there are fast algorithms to implement uh, wavelet transform and get multi resolution coding of images. But uh, this I believe was essential to understanding uh, multi resolution code imaging and uh, how stuff works. So, that said we have now discussed source coding, we have uh, now discussed uh, how the JPEG standard works, just uh, an illustration on slide, how does multi resolution coding works and so, we now have know how to represent signal or a practical signal speech, image, audio, video so that it takes minimum 
amount of memory or minimum amount of space or it requires the minimum number of bits to represent it. So, that is done. So, we have a well represented signal at our hands. Now, once we have a well represented signal on our hands, the question becomes that what do we do with this well represented signal? Uh, do we keep this with ourselves? The answer obviously is no. The information is uh, worthwhile only if you are able to share it. So, the signal is also information. So, naturally you would be wanting to share it. So, the question becomes how do we share this information? How do we share this information? And uh, that is what the rest of this course is going to be about. In the remaining lectures, we will look at uh, communication schemes and uh, in particular in the rest of this course, we will particularly look at physical layer communication systems or baseband communication systems. So, with that we close this chapter. Thank you. Thank you.